Let's draw a few of these before I leave. I don't have time to go through full examples right now, but let's take a look at, say, this case right here. So if we have a ladder that's leaning against a wall, okay, the only direction that the bottom of this ladder can go is that way, and the only direction that the other end of the ladder can go is that way right there. And so if we know the direction of those two velocities, this is one of those cases of two non-parallel velocities. This is case number two. So I want you guys to sketch real quick where you think the instantaneous center is of this ladder. Case number two, non-parallel velocities. How would we find the instantaneous center of this ladder? From the bottom of the ladder. Okay, straight up. I'm good at that. And then coming left from this one, right? Hey, there it is. So once we have that, the nice thing about it is we do need to do a little bit of geometry. We need to figure out what these distances are basically from here down to here. This would be, let me name these points. I'll call this A and call this B. And so this would be R of... Um, B relative to IC. But if we knew, say, one of these velocities, and this fits really well into one of your homework problems, that you have a system that looks a lot like this, except for the bottom isn't horizontal, it's actually a little bit of an angle. But once we find the geometry of where IC is by finding this distance right here, we could find that the omega here of this body, so the omega of AB, so I could say that VB, I won't write it as a vector, I'll write it as a scalar, is equal to omega a b times r of b relative to i c. Right, so if we know this and we know we basically can solve for that geometrically, then we can solve for that omega without having to do actually a relative velocity equation. And we can do that because we also know, if I write this all out in full terms, that the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of c, or this is really our ic, um, plus omega a, not ab, omega, I mean it is omega of ab, it's also the omega of icb, right, it's the omega of the whole system crossed with our position vector of b relative to ic, right, this is exactly where this equation came from, it's just that because this is an instantaneous center, that point goes away, and then also because this and that are perpendicular, right, that, and we know that because that's how we defined the location of that instantaneous center, then it just, it simplifies our math down. So like I said, we trade off some geometry to find this to then not have to find one more velocity term.